to Songs of One Breath. Thanks for joining me today. Lovely to be here with you. 
So at the moment this week, I'm very much focusing on one of my great teachers who's no longer in the body. In fact, he died 53 years ago on Monday, last Monday. Samuel Lewis, Sufi Sam, Murshid, Sufi Ahmed Murad Chisti, the originator of the dances of universal peace. And so in this week where we around the world remember him, I'd love to share with you some of his wisdom, some of his um, practices, some of his chants. So I began with a Ram Nam, which comes from Anand Ashram in Kerala, in southern India. And um, this was an ashram that was established by Papa Ram Das, Swami Papa Ram Das, and Mother Krishnabai, and they initiated Murshid Sam in the 1950s into the practice of Ram Nam. They um, were his Hindu teachers, they recognized him as a teacher in the Hindu tradition. And uh, this comes from Mother Krishnabai's concentration of repeating the Ram Nam for world peace. So, um, Murshid Sam said that Mother Krishnabai was the most enlightened being he ever met. So let's just sing it through slowly one more time, just connecting with this prayer for world peace. Om Shri Ram J Ram J J Ram, the only being who is both personal and impersonal, truth and power, victory to be victory. Shri Ram J. So here's a story from one of the original students of Murshid Sam that I read this week. Some young people once encountered a very wise old being. So this refers to the young hippies in the 60s in San Francisco who met Murshid Sam. He was already an old man at this point. And when they asked for help making their spiritual ideals into reality, this is what he replied. The first line of defense is the moral teaching of kindliness, tolerance and compassion. These belong to all religions and to atheism and to philosophy and to science. They can be advocated at all times and before all peoples. If they do not stand as ideals, conflict will necessarily follow. Christ came to teach not theology, but love. Muhammad came only with the message, message of unity. And Buddha taught that it was an attitude, not a form, which raised one into the peace of nirvana. The religious will accept the ideas of love, harmony and beauty, and the irreligious will accept the ideals of love, harmony and beauty. So you can find a common standard whereby all may join. In this way, the Sufi message in time will help greatly to spread the spirit of human brother and sisterhood and so establish peace on earth. Mm. 
just to repeat the first line of that teaching, the first line of defense, says Murshid Sam, is the moral teaching of kindliness, tolerance and compassion. And what if we make that our guiding principle? What if we recognize that in those we meet? What if we offer that to those we meet? can't argue with it. Kindliness, tolerance and compassion. So let's share a, a breath practice which comes from Murshid Sam. Very often he would invite his students to practice what he called Darud, um, the prayer practice of breathing the words towards the one, breathing in towards the one and breathing out towards the one, placing it in the swing of the breath with every inhalation, every exhalation. And we're in, invited to identify ourselves with the breath. Identify with the phrase. Breathing in toward the one. Breathing out toward the one. Placing your attention in the breath. Traveling in and out. Carrying this phrase toward the one, breathing towards unity. And the invitation is to in identify with the breath, with this sense of being breathed, being breathed by the universe, receiving this in-breath as a gift from God, breathing out as a gift to God. Every inhalation is God's gift to humanity. Every exhalation is humanity's sacrifice to God. And Murshid Sam invites us that if we have a problem or a difficulty in our lives, we can meditate with that problem. We can concentrate on the problem for a while. Maybe you can do that right now. Think of something that you're wrestling with, struggling with. Allow yourself to feel it fully, to breathe with it. And then we can take our breath back into the Darud, breathing towards the one. Inhaling toward the one, exhaling toward the one, focusing on the Darud, the practice. The 
receiving the breath as a gift from God, releasing the out breath as a sacrifice to God, breathing toward the one. And if after a certain time you've been able to concentrate fully on this prayer toward the one, you could begin to bring your problem back into your awareness. And you might find that there's an influx of what Murshid Sam calls cash or insight that will help throw light on the problem. So I invite you to experiment with this practice. Coming back to focusing on the praise toward the one, being present with your breath, identifying with the breath and with the phrase, releasing your identity with your physical existence in that moment. And then changing your focus to this problem or situation focusing fully on that and then moving back and forwards focusing on the Darud toward the one and see what insight comes when you bring that into your awareness of your situation allowing the guidance to flow with the breath Breathing in toward the one, breathing out toward the one. So some of you might know that Murshid Sam was also a teacher in the Zen Buddhist tradition, a Roshi. And he shared with us this phrase, Namo Amida Butsu. Namo Amida Butsu. So we're just going to repeat that. And if you want, you can raise your arms like this and bring the guidance of the Amida Buddha down through your body just as you're sitting or standing or even lying here. So I'll use it. Namo Amida Namo Amir. 
wanted to read something from the diaries of Murshid Sam. He says, at one point in my life, I became totally and absolutely pessimistic to the point that I was a sort of left-handed masochist. I began expecting pain. My life readings have all been consistent. During one of them, I finally began to see my whole karma, the justices in the injustice. If you take a single life, there's always injustice. But if you take a whole series, it all balances out. This has given me a much greater capacity for pain than almost anybody I meet. If I have a sort of composure, it isn't a real composure. It's a composure of having gone through such a tremendous quantity of pain that other things don't, by comparison, bother me. Perhaps, in the end, that's wisdom. I wanted to share that because really, you know, Meshit Sam was somebody who lived, he lived a life that was not easy. These practices, um, this state that he ended up in towards the end of his life was hard won through hard living. You know, um, much practicing, much learning, much studying, much listening. He often said, the secret of my success, big ears, listening and learning. And so there's something for me that's very real and authentic about his work, his practices. It's grounded in this real human experience of being alive with all of the injustice, the justice, the pain, the suffering, the joy, the love, all of the extremes. Here's another short quote from his diary. In the real samadhi, one has not only union with God, but with all humanity. When one is helping others, one is helping oneself. And when one is really helping oneself, one is helping others. In the real samadhi, one has not only union with God, but with all humanity. When one is helping others, one is helping oneself. And when one is really helping oneself, one is helping others. is really simply another way of expressing the unity, the message of unity, la ilaha, el il allahu, as Murshid Sam shared this phrase from the Sufi teaching.
So with gratitude for the teachings of Samuel Lewis, Rashid Sam, Sufi Sam, and gratitude to each one of you for joining me here today. Thank you so much and I hope to see you next week on Songs of One Breath. Bless you. Well, thanks Jalani. Thanks everybody. Mm. Oops, I'll just stop the recording. <laughs>